What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's time to take a look at the Legion Go versus the ROG Ally. And I know a lot of you out there may be on the fence as to which one of these mainstream Windows handhelds you might wanna get a hold of. Now I've had each of these since their launch days. I use both of them a lot along with my Steam Decks and other handhelds. So I figured it's a good time to go ahead and make a video on comparing these two devices and maybe help some of you out there. We'll go over some specs and facts here. We'll also put some opinion and experience in there and uh, what I've gone through with these devices a little bit since day one. They definitely had rough launches, all of them. They, this has kind of been the thing with these handhelds and I've talked about this before, but I'll say just to kind of cover it in the video, I think all these companies from Valve to Asus to Lenovo have done a great job with these first gen devices in taking feedback, doing improvements, fixing things, features, all of that, whether it be physical, software, or whatever. Um, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it here and take a look at the Ally versus the Legion Go. We'll take a look at all the specs and the design, some of the game performance and that kind of thing. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll take a look at the boxes real quick. I'm not going to waste time with an unboxing. They come with their respectable chargers, uh, paperwork, the devices themselves. But I figured I would show them just to kind of showcase the sheer size difference of these two devices for the fun of it as we kick things off here. As far as specs, both supporting the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme with RDNA graphics, Windows 11, 16 gigs of RAM. But we do have that faster RAM over here on the go you can get 512 or one terabyte when you grab one of these up for your storage two cell 50 watt hour 49.2 watt hour on the go and a four cell 40 watt hour on the ally our audio is uh, two speakers for both and we'll listen to those later on but i do feel like the ally has an edge there uh, ports you get two usb-c um, on the go but one usb-c integrated into that xg mobile port uh, over there both have sd card readers, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.1 on the go versus 5.2, and the display 8.8 inch 1600p 500 nit 1610 versus the 7 inch 1080p IPS 500 nit 169 over on the Ally. Uh, the Ally does also have 120 hertz versus the 144, and it has VRR, which we'll talk more about in the display section. Now, as far as the design of these things, I actually really like both devices. When it comes to the Go, though, it is a big boy and is a little bit heavier, of course, than the Ally. And you have a different setup here with your buttons where the top ones are for your menus, and these two over on the left are actually your start and your back buttons. Kind of takes some getting used to. Touchpad, I've come to really like on the Legion Go. It's a nice addition here, and I've learned kind of how this thing works. And I really like using the touchpad on here. It works really, really well. As far as the top here, we've got our left button and our triggers here as normal, which wrap around pretty far here, which has been nice using the device. Volume buttons, USB-C, SD card reader, um, vent port, and our two speakers, of course, and then our buttons on the other side and our power button, which illuminates to show which power mode you're in. Coming down to the bottom, we do have our additional USB-C port, which can be used for out uh, charging or auto monitor or anything, just like the top, which is nice. Our removable controllers, of course, and our stand on the back. So let's go ahead and flip this thing around here. We'll have our intake for the fans. We have a lot of different buttons, programmable buttons on these removable controllers here. You feel a little bit busy at first when you first get the device, but I've come pretty used to it uh, since using this thing the past month on here. Uh, the kickstand has been something I definitely use just a ton. I really, just like the Switch, really enjoy the built-in kickstand that uh, the Legion has here. But yeah, pretty big boy, but so far well-built for me in my experience the past month with using this and testing it out here up against the Ally. Now, the buttons and the triggers and everything feel really good. The thumbsticks are a little bit smaller than the Ally, and the dead zones are pretty rough. We'll talk more about that later. They are coming out with some fixes, hopefully, for that for Legion Space, but... Is a little bit of an issue here around launch time still. All right, let's go ahead and check out the Ally a little bit here and take a closer look. Of course, we do have the smaller 7-inch screen, but it is still a really nice display here on the Ally. The RGB is a bit more prominent around the sticks, and they are a little bit bigger. Other than that, the face buttons are kind of similar. The D-pad's a bit different here. Uh, I do like the button placement better for our start and back buttons here and our menus for um, Armory Crate SE and our Command Center. Front firing speakers is also nice versus the top firing, and I do feel like they're a bit better here uh, on the Ally. Top is very similar. We've got our trigger buttons here and everything. We've got our headphone jack, SD card reader, the ports for XG Mobile and USB-C volume, and a fingerprint reader on the power button there, which is a nice feature the Go doesn't have. Nothing on the bottom here. 
and just our ports and two additional shortcut buttons on the back. It's definitely a simpler design, a little bit easier to navigate and use. This is also a much lighter device and a good bit smaller. So that's going to be some of the first things you're asking yourself when you're looking into buying one of these is, of course, weight and size and display. And that could actually sway your decision pretty quickly if these things are going to be affecting you. Now, we mentioned the Ally does have that fingerprint reader as a pretty unique function that the Go doesn't have. But the Go has these removable controllers very much like the uh, Joy-Cons on a Switch and, of course, the back stand we were talking about. So you're able to take these off and use these, uh, whether you're docked or just like this, as controllers, which is really nice. You can also use the right one as a mouse controller type uh, deal, which has been pretty cool. And I've tested it out here as well on the channel. It's not something I see myself using a lot. It's pretty decent for desktop navigation and other things like that. And jumping in and playing a few games, just trying it out. But it's a really cool, unique feature um, that really only the Legion Go has when it comes to these uh, PC handhelds, at least right now anyways. So it's been pretty cool to check that out. And I haven't had any issues hardware-wise. These have been snapping on and off just fine. Who knows about longevity? It's only been a month out at the time of making this video. But so far, everything's been fine for me hardware-wise here on the go. If any issues, it's all been software stuff that they're working on updates that need straightened out for the device. And bringing this back over to the Ally, of course, it's just a more simple, little, nice little flat brick handheld here uh, that gets the job done quite well. Less complicated, lighter, and probably a bit easier to use for some people. It lacks some features that the Go has, and the Go lacks some features that the Ally has. Now, that brings us to the case situation, which I won't stay here too long, but... The Legion Go comes with a case very similar to the Steam Deck. As far as the Ally, it doesn't come with any case, and the official one I bought just for review, knowing it was a pretty bad case anyways, was about $30 additional. There's some good third-party third party cases out there you can get for the RG Ally, and in the long run, it's not a big deal. However, for these handhelds, I do prefer when they come with a case, especially a decent one, much like the Steam Deck or the Legion Go. I think when you're looking to purchase these anywhere from $600, $700, $800, it's nice if they come with a case like this. The Legion Go case is pretty nice. It's got that port you can plug into a charger when it's in here. It's got the strap for pulling out the Go. It's got that mouse base in here and a place to put your joystick when you're using mouse mode. And it's form fit to the device, so it's really secure in here. And it's also like a, a hard case, uh, so it's pretty protective. So a really nice case, again, very similar to the Steam Deck setup with some extra features here that comes with the Legion Go. And that's something I do like to see with the handhelds. And it's a shame the Ally never really came with a decent case. That's going to bring us to the speakers, which is really hard to portray on YouTube, but I'm going to have some samples here for you to check out and just kind of hear the difference between the Legion Go and the ROG Ally here. All right, guys, there you go. A couple sound samples for you. I do believe, at least in person, the Ally sounds a good bit better than the Legion Go, but both get the job done just fine. Now, when it comes to the software on these devices to help us get things done, navigate, change features and settings, we've got Legion Space here on the Legion Go, and we have Armory Crate SE over on the Ally. Windows itself just isn't the best experience on a handheld, though I feel like it's gotten better the past year or so as far as working decently and having less quirks, but having these pieces of software with these devices is pretty integral when it comes to the experience. And they're kind of similar here. However, Ally is definitely ahead when it comes to having more features and stuff kind of completed. But starting off with Legion Space here, one thing I don't love about Space, but it probably helps kind of subsidize some of the cost here is how the storefronts really push to the fore uh, front of everything. And this cloud area really only has Xbox that doesn't work very well. We have Games Planet for um, being able to go in and buy games and stuff there at a discount. And again, it probably helps, you know, Lenovo to have that front and center here. But for me, it's just not my favorite thing. It's it's okay to have it as a feature here, but it's kind of kind of front and center every time you go into um, Legion space. Now you got your library here, which is nicely laid out where you can go and find the games you have installed, the launchers. Um, you can do a slight bit of editing and adding 
of games and, and custom um, paths and stuff here as well, very much like you'll see when we jump over to ARM and create SE as well. Um, so some features here are pretty good and work pretty well, but Legion Space is lacking uh, a lot of features when it comes to things like fan curve and some of the TDP stuff and uh, other things that we're wanting to get into, but we'll keep looking at all that. Android game section really just installs Amazon Android um, storefront, and that hasn't been something I've wanted to really get into. As far as our settings in here, we've got general. Jump in here and see uh, your version of Legion Space and whatnot in here. We have our performance section for thermal mode. All of these things are more easily accessed through quick access menu, which we'll take a look at. Our display with our three main resolutions, 800p, 1200p, and 1600p. Uh, 144 hertz screen here, or run it at 60. We have some settings for our voice um, microphones that are built in, our speakers here, our controller where we can update firmware uh, and that type of thing. There are um, shortcuts you can customize for your buttons on this controller, but that's another thing uh, Lenovo is working on. It's not great. We'll take a closer look at that here in a little bit. You can change your lighting scheme for the RGB here, which works pretty well. It's not super compre comprehensive, but there's enough in here that you can play around with a little bit and get what you want there for your RGB if you're using that on here. Uh, as far as disk space, we'll have our SSD and I have an SD card in there, so it'll display that. A uh, place for all of our screenshots. If you take any screenshots using Legion Space, they'll pop up in there and in our download path here. So that's kind of a, a look at just Legion Space's general layout. Um, it's fine as a start, but it is lacking a lot of features still in the first month of launch. However, updates from Lenovo um, state how they are working on all of those. Uh, here's our quick settings menu, which is pretty good. You're able to go in here, change your resolution around or your refresh rate more easily than just going into Legion Space and through all the settings there. You can set your different lighting effects here on the go as well. You have your performance tab, which is going to have frame monitor that you can set on here, uh, your, your thermal, your TDP limits here, which was pretty funky for me the first couple of weeks, but it's actually working pretty well now. I can even run 30 watts handheld mode. Uh, 25 is working well. So I was having a lot of issues that uh, seem to be straightened out with the last update I had gotten uh, for this thing, which is nice. Again, they're improving pretty quickly here, trying to uh, straighten everything out on the software side. All right, so you can toggle through those modes there. Uh, we have OS uh, performance mode here or power mode. You can do a full fan there. So there's not a lot in here. Again, it's not super comprehensive, but there are a lot of features on the way to help make Legion Space better, which we do need to see. Now let's go into Armory Crate SE and you'll see what I mean. This is a much more flushed out, more smooth experience. And it wasn't when this first device or when this device first came out, but it is a much better now a few months after its summer launch here. So you have your library here, very similar. You can add your games just like over on space and everything. So it works pretty well. One difference here is though, you can like change the thumbnails a lot easier and stuff with this um, Armory Crate. Uh, we have our settings area, which again is a good bit more comprehensive on Armory Crate SE. You can configure your control modes, you can calibrate for your dead zones and stuff like that, which we're waiting for on the uh, Legion Go right now. Key mapping is pretty comprehensive. I was talking about this earlier. So on the Legion Go right now, you have so many buttons on this thing, but it's very limited what you can actually set these to. Um, all of them are the same. So you go in here and click on this where it says disabled and they all have the same options and you can't customize uh, your shortcuts or do multi-button clicks or anything like that. And again, this is something that they have come out and said that they're working on getting implemented by the end of December 2023 here, but it's not in there yet. As to where in, a, in Armory Crate, it's very easy to go in here and it's a very comprehensive shortcut uh, hotkeys that you can set up, even multi-button com combined keys, uh, and I use this stuff a lot. So it's a really nice setup in Armory Crate, in my opinion, for that. As far as our operating mode, it's easy to go in here and play with the TDP and fan curves a bit, and you do have a lot more option here um, than you do on space. And I'll keep saying this so you guys know, Lenovo, again, has come out and said these types of things and features like the van curves and more things you can do with the TDP are on the way. They're just not there at time of making this video. So that kind of just is what it is. But Armory Crate SE right now certainly has a big advantage when it comes to um, how much work Asus has put in here to get the features everybody's been asking for. We also have GPU settings, which is nice. So auto and 1G all the way up through 8G, you can pick for your VRAM, which is really nice. But not only that, we can do it right here in Armory Crate and restart the device and we don't have to go into BIOS ourselves. So that's a nice one. Again, something that should be coming to Legion Space, but isn't there yet.
We have some things we can go in here and change color temperature and settings for our display. We have more comprehensive um, lighting features in here. If uh, you want to mess with your RGB and stuff, you can make some changes over on space as well. And RGB is not my biggest thing, so I don't care that much, but it is a more comprehensive setup if you're into uh, changes with that. And they have Aura Sync built in, of course, being ASUS as well to the ROG Ally. Also, the ability to customize your command center or what would be the quick menu over on Legion Space is really nice as well. You can really pick what kind of options you want in there, what you want to be able to cycle through quickly with command center, which we'll take another look at here as, as well as we get into it. Um, calibrate is the other thing I was saying, something you can't do with Legion uh, yet, which is calibrate those dead, uh, dead zones and the sensitivity of your sticks, your triggers, and that type of thing. It's features that are on the way, but... Ally has it now, and the Legion Go doesn't yet. We have our media gallery, which is the same as the screenshot area over in space, uh, system info, your storage, a lot of the same information you were able to see over there. One other thing I do like here, though, is they have, um, well, they have these guided tours and tutorials and stuff you can get into, but the Go has that area as well, but they're games. So they do have a game section where you can go in and look at deals, buy games, and do things like that. But it's not front and center. Your own games and your settings and your experience is front and center in Armory Crate. And the games are last. As to where in Legion Space, they're front and center and all of your stuff is behind that. That's just one thing. Um, command center here, really cool, easy to use. Cycle through your TDPs that you have set up, your control modes, uh, your real-time monitor, FPS limiter, your resolution. A lot like Legion Space on the quick settings. It's just this is a little bit more comprehensive right now until the uh, space gets updated. But 720p, 900p, 1080p, 60 or 120 hertz versus Legion Go's uh, 800, 1200, and 1600p at 60 or 144. Keeping in mind the Ally does have the VRR FreeSync Premium on their screen and the Go doesn't have any uh, FreeSync or VRR. In my opinion, as far as fans go, unless you have a whiny fan or a whistly fan in one of your devices, for the most part, these are pretty quiet in comparison to devices I've used in the past. So I'm not going to get into this too heavily. You're always going to have some kind of fan noise as long as it's not the bad kind with whine or whistle. Go ahead and take a listen. Now, these were only at 20 watt, and it depends on what you're playing and what wattage. The Go can certainly get louder. The Ally can get louder. Um, but the point is, just for the most part, fan noise for me, as long as you don't have some kind of a defect happening, just isn't really an issue for me. But yes, if you're gaming and stuff, you're going to hear both of these guys uh, blowing the fan, especially if you're above 20 watts. So that brings me on to the screens, which is my favorite part of handhelds and really can make or break a handheld for me. Luckily for us, both of these devices have fantastic screens, but the Legion Go's sheer size for me really pulls me into the device. The color saturation, even though they're both, I guess, 500 nits, the Go just always seems brighter, even with both of these maxed out throughout the whole video. And I just really enjoy its screen. Now, the lack of VRR on the smaller screen is not a deal breaker for me, but I do notice it. I do like VRR over on the Ally, so that's just something to be aware of for you if that's going to matter. Both have fantastic screens when you're sitting here gaming on them, but it's going to depend on you on what kind of size you're looking for for your screen, what kind of brightness, color, saturation, that type of thing. And for me, even though I love both screens, the Go certainly does immerse me more into the games, but I certainly enjoy playing on the Ally with the VRR 120 hertz as well. So this brings us on to some games. And of course, this is going to be an important part for a lot of people. And I've really enjoyed gaming on both of these devices. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. I really enjoy the 120 hertz VRR, the speakers, and the simpler design here on the Ally. And it's a bit easier to transport around and it's, it's smaller and lighter. But on the other side, I also really enjoy the immersion of the larger, just more colorful, vibrant display of the Go and its unique features with the kickstand, removable controllers, and all those features that I'm using myself as well. So both devices just really hit on different points for me, and you're really going to have to dig in and decide what's going to be the most important part for you. Now to bring us on to some gaming performance, battery life in general for me has been very similar for both of these devices. If I'm running 20 watts and up, just due to the size of the Go screen, even though it has a bigger battery, I don't get much more 
out of it than I do the the ally necessarily. I can play 25 watts max in handheld when you're in uh, on the ally. Um, of course, you can play 10, 15, 20, and all that as well. Over on the Legion Go, you can do the 10, 15, 20, and all that, but you can also go all the way up to 30 watts in handheld mode. At least I've been able to since the last couple of updates that I've gotten, which is certainly going to kill the battery, but having the option there for particular workloads or games for short bursts could certainly be useful enough. But I do notice through all of my game testing I've been doing in dozens of games recently, uh, since getting this, it does often perform better than the ally when it comes to FPS sometimes, but especially frame times. And a lot of that's going to come down to that additional power that we have in the uh, the RAM, the additional speed that we have in the RAM, and maybe some other things they're doing when it comes to BIOS and drivers and things like that. But go ahead and check out these benchmarks and performance here for both of these devices. I really like them both, but it does appear the Go tends to have some performance advantage, whether it be FPS or frame times over the Ally in most of the games I've been checking out. All right, check out the rest of these benchmarks here, and then we'll recap at the end. Days here. Hey, handsome, we're here for the show. Go get him, Robo. All right, guys, so those are the benchmarks for you. At least a few games. There's a lot more to get into. I'll have a lot more videos coming on the channel when it comes to comparing game performance specifically on these devices and others. But this being more of an overall comparison, there's only so much games. I could fit in here but overall the story tends to be the same where the go gets me the same or more fps usually with better frame times overall in most games just seems to be the case right now so when it comes down to it hopefully this video was able to kind of help you decide what device you might be leaning to certainly if you want the larger a little bit heavier device but you really get that larger screen with the removable controllers the kickstand and those types of features the go really is a pretty solid device so far especially if lenovo comes through with all the missing features and updates they've been talking about However, on the other flip side, the Ally offers a easier to use, lighter experience, a little bit less complicated with better onboard software so far anyway with Army Crate SE versus Legion Space. And if VRR is important to you, the Ally is the only one to offer that. There's just a lot to these devices and a lot of different things they offer to different gamers and different people. And you really want to do your research and decide which is really going to be the best for you. I really truly love both of these devices, but they certainly both have their flaws, but they also have their great points as well. All right, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.